the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album. Is it a compilation album or is it a soundtrack album? I don't know. Who cares? I do, I do like an intro. I didn't know that I liked an intro until I did a little intro. And now I've done a little intro, I have decided that I like a little intro. Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatly Tones, Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining me for this video. Now you'll be really pleased to know that this video is the last in the little mini series where we go through all the compilation albums. We've got four to do. Why did I do that? That's not four. That's, that's four. Four, we've got four albums to do and then in the next video, I'll be ranking them from worst to best and we can have a little discussion and you can tell me that I've got it completely wrong. Now in the comments from episode three, someone mentioned, oh, you've forgotten the, the, the Rarities album, the UK and the US albums. Now, I didn't forget them. The reason why I didn't include them was because those two albums have got songs on them or bits of songs on them that hadn't been um, released before. So they, didn't re they don't really fall into that genre of the rehashed compilation album. So that's why they weren't included. And by the same token, that means that I won't be covering the anthology series in this video either, nor the Love album, and also the Beatles box from 1980, an ALP compilation, which is really a box set. When I'm doing my ranking, I can't really compare uh, an A album box set to, you know, a single or double album compilation. So that was the reason why the rarities aren't included and these other albums aren't included either. Now, as usual, I want to hear what you think about the, the albums that were included in this video down in the comments below. Tell me what you think. I want to also thank you so much for all the comments that, that I've been getting on this series it's really great that you've all been engaged in it and i'm seeing you know i'm seeing comments from the same people and i really appreciate you guys being here and taking the time to comment and as you know i always reply to everything so just keep them coming and on the subject of comments i want to give a big thanks to uh, my american friends beetle man 69 and mr beatles pro who have been giving me information in the comments as we go on the american versions of these albums so thanks very much for them they've both got channels so do check them out they've got lots of nice things to show and talk about if you've missed episodes one two or three and you want to catch up with them you can click the link down in the description below or if you want to binge the whole lot all in one go There'll be an end card at the end of this video that you can just click on and just watch them all if you want to. So, by the time we got to the end of episode three, we're at 1982. Now, the next thing to come out of Camp Beatles was in 1987, uh, they released all the Beatles original albums plus Magical Mystery Tour on CD for the first time. So I expect a lot of the 80s were taken up with getting those albums prepared and ready for release. So they didn't have time to mess around with rehashing old stuff as compilation albums. Now, on the back of that release in 1987, and they did drip feed them to us, in 1988, they put out these two compilations, Past Masters Volume 1 and Past Masters Volume 2. Number one sort of going from the beginning to about 1965, and this one going from 1965 to 1970. And what these two compilations did was they collected together all the non-album tracks. So singles that hadn't been on albums, B-sides of singles that hadn't been on albums, and the two German tracks. And what it meant that once you got these, if you got all the other CDs that came out the year before, you then had everything on on CD, so they were a great compilation. I always found Past Masters an odd name for this this album that was mopping up all the bibs and bobs. They could have called it Bibs and Bobs, I suppose. It's funny, <laughs> you do get bobs without bibs, but you never see bibs without bobs. It's like nooks and crannies. You can get nooks on their own, but 
you never see you never say oh look at that cranny over there it always it's always nooks and crannies anyway I, dig I digress I don't know what they they could have called them that it would have been better I get it that it's quite a, a difficult bucket to put these these into because they're all from you know so many different sources but past masters I always thought was a funny name because past masters seems like such a grand name and what this was was the kind of it was kind of the leftovers so stuff that wasn't on album funny name anyway i'm talking absolute nonsense so we will come back to the past masters we'll talk about these that that came out much later in a more extended format because they when they're volume one and volume two just referred to time periods and it all got a lot more complicated much later on so for the first part of the 1990s there wasn't much beatles action at all they were working on the anthology series for most of that first half of the 90s. We got that in 1995 and that was followed by the video release of anthology. So it wasn't until 1999 when we got our first compilation of the 90s. And that was this one, the Yellow Submarine soundtrack. Now, so the idea of this, this album was to put all the songs that had featured in the Yellow Submarine film onto one album to coincide with the release of the Yellow Submarine film on DVD. Now say all the songs that were on Yellow Submarine, the one omission was A Day in the Life, which featured in the film, but it's not on this album. And the reason that Apple gave for leaving it off the album was they said there was already too many songs from Sgt Pepper on the album. So they left off a Day in the Life, the best song on Sgt Pepper from the album. So let's have a look at the, the back of the album, which has the track listing. And what a great track listing it was. We had a couple of songs from Rubber Soul, a couple from Revolver, some Sgt Pepper, Magical Mystery Tour, and of course, Yellow Submarine. What the album didn't include was the orchestration, the George Martin orchestration that was on side two of the original Yellow Submarine, you know, the bit that nobody ever plays. What the, we got was an album filled with Beatles music, which was great. But not only that, the all the songs that were on it were remixed. It's the first time we had a whole album of songs remixed. And the songs were remixed by Peter Cobbin and assisted by Paul Hicks. So back then, Paul Hicks was just the assistant on this on this project. But obviously, we all know Paul Hicks's name now. Uh, he's responsible for the re all the John Lennon box set remixes, and of course, all things must pass. So I first heard these remixes on the CD. I had this this first, and it absolutely blew me away. I thought it was just fantastic, and it's really noticeable the different feel of this this remix and it it really really does sound great i can't emphasize that enough so let's have a look at the album i'll show you the gatefold because the gatefold is something to behold i'll stand up for this so you can see it isn't that gorgeous Fantastic. Now that was, it was replicated in the CD. There's one thing that the CD doesn't do great and that's, that's that, that gatefold sleeve because it's all folded up and smaller. <laughs> it's all folded up and smaller. That's what it is. I'm not saying that the album doesn't sound great. It is a great sounding album. Because yeah, 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 we know vinyl always sounds better than CD. But in this case, I don't think it does. I think this sounds better than the vinyl. And uh, I think it's a real case in question, uh, not case in question, because that's completely the wrong expression, a case in point that sometimes the CD can sound better than vinyl, but that's a discussion for another video, I think. We'll have a look at the vinyl. 
So here's the vinyl. It's got a really nice custom label. I think that's very nice indeed. It's not 180 gram vinyl, but as I say, it does sound good. I just think that the CD sounds better. So that's the Yellow Submarine soundtrack. I think it's a great compilation. If you haven't got it and you're thinking about maybe getting it and you still listen to CDs, I would say get the CD because I think it sounds better and obviously it's cheaper. So if you are thinking about it, don't hesitate. Just go and get it. And that's the Yellow Submarine soundtrack. So as far as compilation albums go, there were 17 years between the 20 greatest hits in 1982 and the Yellow Submarine song track in 1999. And then like buses, the very next year, this album came along. The one album, so we got two in two years. It was almost like being back in the 70s. Now, the premise of the one album was that it gathered together all the records that had got to number one in either the UK or the US. It's funny because you you kind of think of that period as being the time where, well, do we, you know, do, do we need any compilations anymore? Now that we've got, we, we're able to make our own playlists, uh, you, think, you think that we wouldn't need compilation albums, yet this album was number one in about 35 different countries, I think. And in the US, it, I think it was the fourth biggest selling album of the noughties. And in the UK, it was the biggest selling album of the noughties. So obviously it's sold by the bucket load and uh, obviously still a need for compilations. Now this one had a few uh, anomalies on it, depending on where you are in the world. So the first track on side one is a double album, by the way, it's a double album. And first track on side one was Love Me Do, which obviously didn't get to number one in the UK, but it did in the States, only got 17 in the UK. And then we've got Penny Lane is on here, which only got to number two, as remember here, it was a double, double A side with Strawberry Fields. But Penny Lane is on here, but Strawberry Fields isn't. And that's because in the States, they included radio play as part of their, uh, part of the calculation of the chart position. And so both Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields would be treated separately and Penny Lane reached number one and Strawberry Fields obviously didn't. So that's not why it's not here. Obviously it's a really good track listing. You, I don't need, you don't need me to go through all the number ones. You know what's on, what's on here, all, all the hits, all the hits. So it looked like that. The tracks on the back, you can see them here. I'll show you the tracks. You can pause the video if you want to look closer. I'll show you the gatefold as well, which is quite lovely. Quite familiar photos. Now, there are a few iterations of this album. As I say, first came out in the year 2000, then it was remastered in 2011, and then in 2015, the album was remixed by Giles Martin and Sam O'Kell, and that's the copy that I've got here. This is the 2015 one. Now, in, in 2015, there was also this release here, the One Plus album, which is a very nice package, but um, this includes uh, a couple of Blu-rays, but you do get the remixed CD with it and you get a couple of Blu-rays that have got, I think, 50 promotional films. So there's the pro promotional film for all the tracks that are on here and then there's plus a, a load of extras as well. There's 27 tracks on the album and this, and it also comes with this really nice book as well. So I'm not, going to, I'm not going to bother going through that, through that. That's for some, some other time. But obviously, if you haven't got the one album, one plus package is probably the one to go for unless you specifically want it on vinyl because you get the remix CD plus two Blu-rays. So it's a really, really nice package. But anyway, back to the main album. 
So when it when you get these compilation albums, you know, of stuff that you've already got, there's you know several things that can persuade you to buy them or not. So the 2015 has got the advantage of being remixed and very nice they are too, sounding fantastic on both the, the LP and the CD. But the other thing that can persuade you to buy a compilation album of stuff that you already own is the packaging. And the packaging for the one album is probably the best of any compilation album that we've had from the Beatles so far. So let me show you the things that you get inside the one album. So those pictures from the gatefold, they come very nice prints of those. And then you got this massive poster, which I'm gonna have to stand up to show you. But this is a, a, a poster of all the different sleeves from around the world, all the picture sleeves that the singles came in. I'll try and show you it, but it's huge. It really does need to uh, go up on the wall. Fantastic poster, really great poster. So the inner sleeves of the album came again with the pictures of the picture sleeves that the singles came in, a bit of information about the songs on the other side, and the vinyl, 180 gram vinyl, had a custom one label. Now I'm gonna have a niggle about this. I'm gonna show you just how small it says side one and side two. And seeing as the labels are the, are the same on both sides, that is really annoying that you have to have a telescope to actually be able to see which side of the record you're playing. Terrible, make it big. So that's a little niggle about that al this album, but it's my only niggle. That's side three and four. I don't need to show you the vinyl, it's exactly the same, but some more picture sleeves there and the track information there. So, all in all, the one album, very good. Very good indeed. It gives you something new, it gives you, it gives you some remixes, it gives you lots of swag with the album, and it's sold by the bucket load. Great compilation. So that's the Beatles one. So you remember these two from 1988 that we talked about earlier. In 2009, when the whole Beatles catalogue was remastered, we got a stereo and a mono version of the Past Masters. This one here we'll talk about first. This is the, the mono masters that was included in the Beatles in Mono box set. So this is 2009. So the premise for the mono masters album, which is a triple album, is exactly the same as it was for the Past Masters CDs in 1988, and it was to mop up all the non-album songs that hadn't been released on albums. So in 1988, when the Past Masters came out, they were pretty much, all the, all the mixes were in stereo. There was a few songs that were in mono, uh, Love Me Do From Me To You, Thank You Girl, She Loves You, I'll get you the two German songs and you know my name, look up the number. So in the past masters one and two, those monos were part of those albums that everything else was in stereo. Now you've got the whole lot in mono and something extra as well, because what you've got on here is the, uh, the four new songs for the Yellow Submarine album, Hey Bulldog, all together now, it's only a northern song and it's all too much, which were planned for a, a mono EP in 1969, which was then scrapped, are here. So that doesn't, they don't appear on the, uh, the Past Masters from 1988. So I'll just show you the back of the album so you can see the track listing. 
which are 33 songs across six sides. A couple of those sides have only got four tracks on it, which is a bit cheeky. Now it's a, it's a tri-fold sleeve. I think that's the right word for it. So I'll show you that. So the information about the song, that very lovely picture there. It's so all in all mono. Mono Masters is a great compilation. It's 33 tracks. It's three out. Oh, I haven't shown you. I haven't shown you the vinyl. Let me show you the vinyl. So it comes in a, a poly line sleeve. And it's on an apple. Very nice, and it's 180 gram vinyl as well. So that's your Mono Masters. So finally, we come to our very last compilation, and that's the the Beatles Past Masters in stereo. This is the 2009 remastered version of everything that is on these two CDs that came out in 1988. The track listing is exactly the same. We've still got Love Me Do, which by the way is, is the single version, obviously not the version that was on Please Please Me. Uh, so we've got Love Me Do, She Loves You, I'll Get You, and uh, You Know My Name, Look Up The Number, still in mono, even on the stereo past masters, which is exactly the same as we had on the 1988 past masters, but obviously these are the 2009 remasters. So we'll have a look, there's the back of the sleeve. This is just a double album rather than the triple that is the, uh, the mono masters. And then the inside of the sleeve looks like this. That's the gatefold. Of course, I'm going to let you look at the vinyl. Stop going on. So how it differs is first, what side one and two are on the parlor phone because they're the early songs. And guess what? Side three and four are on an apple. Hundred and eighty gram vinyl, as you would expect. So obviously both these are albums are winners, and you know, if you're not a completist, you should have one or the other. Um, as far as whether you go for the mono or the stereo, uh, that's entirely up to you. The, the age old argument is, is mono better than stereo? Is stereo better than mono? Mono is irrelevant, really, because, in my opinion, some songs sound better in mono and some sound better in stereo. So the choice is yours. Anyway, that's it. We've done all the compilation albums. The next video is going to be a ranking of all the compilation albums that we've we've looked at and I'll be ranking them from worst to best. As usual, I want to hear your comments down here uh, about the albums that we've looked at in this video. And if you're seeing this channel for the first time, why not subscribe? Uh, just click the little button in the corner and uh, you won't miss a thing. Uh, give the video a like and hit the notification bell and you'll be told whenever there's a new video. So I thank you all so much for watching. Always great to have you here and thank you for supporting my channel and I'll see you in a couple of days for the ranking video. Thanks very much.